For our next summation we're going to analyze, we're going to look at the summation that has 1 divided by some fraction. To prove this, we're going to again use mathematical induction. That is, in general, the easiest way to prove these formulas. There probably are other ways. However, induction works very, very well for these. The way summations are defined lends itself very naturally to mathematical induction. So just as we did before, we're going to write that we are using mathematical induction for the reader. We prove this via induction. We must then prove the base case. As before, our summation starts with n is a positive integer, so our base case is n equals 1. In that case, the left-hand side becomes the sum from i equals 1 to 1 of 1 over i times i plus 1, which is equal to, just as before, that has one term, plugging in 1 into that formula. That is 1 over 1 times 2, which is 2. Furthermore, n over n plus 1 is 1 over 2. So the base case seems to be true. We now must make our inductive assumption. So our inductive assumption we're going to assume assume that the formula holds for n. So if we go the sum from 1 to n of 1 over i times i plus 1 is equal to n divided by n plus 1. We then want to show want to show that the sum from i equals 1 to n plus 1 of 1 divided by i times i plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2. Notice this is the exact same setup as before, and the same setup as all of our inductive problems so far. We are then going to start by analyzing the summation that we want to analyze, and then we are going to show that that equals the right-hand side eventually. So, we're going to consider the n plus first summation, so the sum from i equals 1 to n plus 1 of 1 divided by i times i plus 1, which is equal to, how are we going to analyze this? Well, we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. We're going to peel off the n plus first term and then try to use our inductive hypothesis. So this is equal to 1 divided by n plus 1 times n plus 2 plus the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i times i plus 1. Notice that that first term is plugging n plus 1 into the sum and, the thing inside of the summation, which is 1 divided by i times i plus 1. So we're plugging in n plus 1 into this formula, and then we reduce the top bound of the summation because we've peeled off that single term. Now, just as we saw in the past, we're going to use our inductive hypothesis to rewrite that summation. So we have that this is equal to the first term remains untouched as 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2. Plus, we use our inductive hypothesis on that summation. It claims that that summation is equal to exactly n divided by n plus 1, and that's by inductive hypothesis. Now, we again have an algebra problem. We need to simplify this expression to equal n plus 1 divided by n plus 2. So, this is equal to 1 divided by n plus 1 times n plus 2. I need to multiply the second fraction by n plus 2 to get a common denominator here. I can then add these things, and I have 1 plus n squared plus 2n all divided by n plus 1 times n plus 2. I'm going to rewrite that in the same step here because I really don't like the fact that it isn't in descending order of the powers. So I'm going to write that as n squared plus 2n plus 1. So let's erase that and write it as n squared plus 2n plus 1. 
And now I need to try to simplify this into n plus 1 divided by n plus 2. The easiest way to get there is probably to factor that polynomial on the top. I already have some suspicions about how it factors, though, because I know what my end goal is supposed to be. I know it should look like n plus 1 divided by n plus 2. So somehow n plus 1 had better be a factor because I need it in the end. So this probably looks like n plus 1 times something else. In fact, it's n plus 1 quantity squared, because if the n plus 1s were to cancel, I would be left with n plus 1 divided by n plus 2. So sometimes you can use the thing you want to show to help uh, give you intuition for how to factor this polynomial. So this is n plus 1 quantity squared divided by n plus 1 times quantity n plus 2. And now the n plus 1 in the denominator and one of the n plus 1s in the numerator will cancel each other out, and I'm left with n plus 1 divided by n plus 2. You might say, well, why did he bother going on that huge tangent that was a really easy polynomial to factor? Sometimes these things get really messy and it involves thinking for a while to figure out how to factor it. However, you should already have some intuition as to how it should factor because you know your end goal for the simplification. You're told that by the thing you want to show. So that is what we wanted to do. We have that our summation is equal to n plus 1 divided by n plus 2, which is exactly verbatim what we needed to show. So now we just need to finish up the proof by claiming what we need to claim. So the summation it formula is true. 1 to n plus 1 of 1 divided by i times i plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 divided by m plus 2. The result follows by induction, just like we did in the last problem. The result follows by induction. Induction is in some sense tailor-made for this type of problem. Induction works very naturally for things that are defined recursively. Summations, by definition that we saw in our first video, are defined recursively. Therefore, it is usually very good to use induction for any problem like this, even if you were not told to do so in the problem. The only major difference between any of these proofs is the algebra and manipulations you need to do. In general, starting with the desired summation, peeling off the first term and then using the inductive hypothesis is always going to be a good start. You then need to do a bunch of algebra to show does it actually hold.